Okay, we're gonna get started. I wanna do the inner circle here, and by all means, I've already got my paints laid out here. Feel free to use whatever colors that you want. I usually cheat a little bit, and I try to dry my, uh, dry, draw my designs out a little bit. I am using an angled brush. You notice I'm not using a teeny tiny brush. This is probably about a half inch wide. I like to use a little bit wider brush to do my outlining just because it will hold more paint. When you got more paint on your brush, it's going to be less reloading it. By reloading, I mean by dipping it. Be prepared. Most paints take a couple coats. So that's why I want, and usually if you're doing something like this that has a middle design to it, it's usually easier to start from the middle because while it's drying, you can go on out to the outer edges of it. I like to go around it and then with longer strokes, even it all out like that. Okay? Let me thicken it up just a little bit around the edges. This paint's covering so pretty good. I may not have to do a second coat. But if I do, that's not a big deal. And once again, I just go out and spread it out. Just even it out just a little bit. That will keep, help you from having all those streaks. Okay, so there's that. Um, while that's drying, I'm going to go on to the little stem part of this. I'm going to go with a, a little bit of green. Just regular old grass green, nothing spectacular. Go with that just a little bit smaller angled brush. You'll find I use more angled brushes than anything. They um, are great for outlining. They fan out nicely. And they're really good for getting into uh, little bitty corners and crevices like that. I'm gonna go through and get all my base coating, also known as just your background colors, done first. Okay, back here I've just got a jar with some warm water and I like to uh, wash my brushes out with Murphy's Oil Soap. It cleans them out nicely. I let them soak, it's not gonna hurt them. I let them soak and plus it's gonna soften your bristles where it almost feels like makeup brushes. Next thing I'm gonna go ahead down here while those are both still drying and do my pot. Now I want my pot yellow but if you have ever painted with yellow paint it will cause ugly words to go through your head. Not kidding. Okay because it just does not cover well. So what I'm going to do I'm going to start with a white. I'm just going to give it a quick thin coat of white and that will help the yellow to cover a little bit better because normally yellow takes umpteen coats of paint to cover it. I'm just when you're doing your edges I kind of like to I'm not a, I'm not scared to load my paint and usually this is where people make the biggest mistake because they'll get the teeniest tiniest brush to outline that which when you're using a teeny tiny brush, like I was telling you, you're going to have to constantly reload it with paint, okay, or re-dip it, whatever you want to call it. I like to use a little brush because it gives you smoother, you can have long strokes like that and it smooths out very nicely. That's why everybody's always wondering, how are they getting all these streaks? Because you're using a smaller brush, then you really need to. Okay, see how I'll go on there and I'll brush this in like that and it's not so pretty. But before I let it dry, I will take my brush, and I'm using a pretty good size brush here, flat brush, and go through and smooth out. Okay? Alright. Now while that's going to dry, I'm going to go on back up here. And now I'm going to use a pretty good size angled brush. Again, they're flat. 
but it's angled. The angled brush is what I use more than anything. And I'm gonna use red here. Sometimes red is a tricky color to get covered as well. But I'm just gonna go up here and outline. I'm gonna go ahead and do this so I don't get my red in it. See how good the angled brush is for that? Because while you're outlining, it is fanning out and giving you a nice smooth edge. And see, if I had a teeny tiny brush, I wouldn't have been able to make that long stroke from there to there. It would have just been teeny tiny. And when you're trying to realign those and connect them, it can get very jagged. And if you're more comfortable with actually getting a hair dryer out and drying these parts before you go on to the next, feel free. All right. Now, while this is still wet, I've still I've got some red here. I'm actually, and I'm just using the acrylic, guys. I'm gonna take a little bit of the red. This is where you're gonna think we're getting into Bob Ross stuff. It's really not hard. I'm gonna take that same brush. I didn't even wash it. Dip it in a little bit of white. And just kind of marble it okay just marble it don't mix it totally while this is still wet you want it to be wet when you're doing this since this is if you're just going to give it a second coat don't do this yet okay but it's covering pretty good i'm only going to do one can you see that let me move my light up here a little bit see how it's starting to give it a little Highlights. Need a little bit more white. And I got a little bit too much there, so that's not a problem. Go back with your deep red that you're using and just go over it. Don't get worry about this. I'm going to show you something else how we're going to do that. Okay. Now some places I don't care if there's a little bit more white because that might be where light is actually hitting it. Okay. Can, can y'all see that? Oh, you can. Good. Good, good, good. You can see I'm just marbling it. I'm not mixing it totally at all. Now, if you wanted to keep it just the, the solid red, that would have been totally fine. If this is scaring the bejesus out of you, um, that would have been totally fine. Absolutely. But hopefully you can see how it's just giving some highlights and stuff around here and there. Okay, I'm gonna turn this back up. And wash my brush out real quick. Okay, so I uh, really quickly I went ahead and dried this. I'm gonna go ahead and start with a yellow. Let me move some of these paints out of the way. Just got a regular O yellow, and my white is dry. Now before you do a second coat or anything, be sure to dry then. Okay, always dry before you try to give it a second coat of anything. So I'm gonna just go through here and do this just like I did the white. And if you are more comfortable painting flat surfaces like I am, do it. Do it. I painted long enough, I think I can do this, but I'm very much more comfortable with it down on the table for me to do this. I like to just kind of do my outsides and fill in. Set this down here for a second and do this side. I 
I know in many studios, art studios, you go in to paint. You paint up on an easel like this. Some people, it, they're totally fine with it. For me, it drives me bonkers. But I thought it would be easier for you guys to see it in this fashion. So that's why I did it. There's that. And it covered, and since I put that white undercoat, the yellow covered really, really nicely. So I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and flip it over. The turquoise, the red is good, but my turquoise color, I am gonna go ahead and give this a second coat of the turquoise and what we get. And again, I like the angled brush. I use angled brush more than anything. This, I, I went ahead and dried this too, guys. Don't freak out over this being a perfect circle. Because we're actually going to put a little um, design work around it that's going to cover it up. And again, you go all the way around it. and then go through and smooth out. That's a little off kilter there. I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna show you something. We're gonna do some little polka dots or something around it. So let me dry this really quick. And okay. then we'll get some. I've got everything dried now. So I'm gonna go ahead and as you can see, it looks kind of blah, right? It looks very blah. So I'm gonna add this same color turquoise and this color turquoise is not showing up that pretty on, um, the camera but it is a really pretty turquoise i'm going to add polka dots down here that will match with that and i'm going to take my same turquoise i was using i'm using these little sponge daubers you can get these at any craft store walmart whatever i'm going to dip it in the paint and you can see it's pretty thick on there let me show you real quick i'm going to go down here and be sure and dab it off i'm going to dab it off and i'm just going to start when you're doing polka dots start at one corner i don't care which corner you start at a corner Okay, push it on here and push it down, give it a twist, then pull up. Okay, that's the twist is so dip dab. I'll show you on this one. It'll push it down, like here it is. Push it down a little bit, give it a twist, then pull up. That's what's going to give you a perfect circle. So I start here and then I'm going to go. I never want to go straight under or right beside it. So I'm going to go over a little bit. There's my two. You always want to make triangles. So now I'm going to go about right here. I make a triangle. I'm not even with that and I'm not even with that. So you just keep making triangles because you, so you won't be in a polka dot predicament. I'm going to go off of this just a little bit because I don't want to be even with that. There's that one. Now I'm going to make two. There's my two. I'm going to make a triangle here. Okay. You getting it? I'm going to put one here. Redip. You can get two or three out of one dipping. Now I'm going to use. This is going to be my triangle. So I'm going to go this way just a little bit. This is going to be my triangle. And I don't care if I go off a little bit. These two are going to be my triangle. And I still think I need one down here, so here's going to be my triangle right in the corner. There. Do that, and you'll never be in a polka dot predicament. I had to go wash my sponge out. That's one thing with these sponges, guys. You need to wash them out immediately. If it dries in there, your sponges are ruined. It comes in three sizes. It's these two and that bigger one I just used here. So now I'm going to flip this sucker over while those dots are drying. Now I'm going to take the yellow and bring it up here. Um, I'm going to use one of these smaller ones. I don't know which one I'm wanting yet. I'm going to try the smaller one first and if I don't like it, I can go with the bigger one and cover it. You can never go with the bigger one and then go with the smaller one. So always start off with the smaller one. Okay. I'm going to start right here. Let me see. Can't decide. Smaller, bigger. Um, just for time's sake, I think I'm going to go with the bigger. 
I think it's going to be fine. So I'm going to just follow the circle all the way around. Okay, got that done. So um, actually, I'm going to leave it there. So here's where you decide if you want to do lettering on it or if you want to just do designs on it. I'm just going to do designs on this one for today. So I'm going to take um, a little bit of that turquoise I was using. Take a little bit of the turquoise and some white and again I'm just marbling just marbling not mixing it totally and I'm just gonna go in here and nothing fancy every which way just to add a little texture in there How easy okay and I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over because with that same um, turquoise and the white marbled I'm gonna go in here hopefully you can see that let me do one it's just like it's kind of like a comma inside of it okay and I hope y'all can't hear my stomach <laughs> did not do breakfast this morning okay so I'm just going through here it's just adding like some little highlights to it just giving it a little bit of movement and bounce to it okay and with this one I forgot to tell you I'm just using a small round brush it's just that's what's called it's just a round brush and I think it's a number six yeah this is what I use for all my little highlights and um, stuff like that all right now what are we gonna do now I think I want to bring some of this red down here so I think I'm gonna do a little bit of that in with the dots as well so I'm gonna take some of my red just like we did the turquoise and dip it in the white and just marble it a little bit and I'm just gonna kind of go over where I did while ago See how it brings, it balances it and brings the color down? I love that. And again, this is optional stuff here. If it scares you to death, you do not have to do this. It just, it, it kind of starts to bring your painting to life and gives it a little bit more character. Okay. I'm going to kind of do that sort of same, I'm going to kind of do that sort of same thing if that makes any sense. To, I'm gonna flip it back over to the these little yellow ones. I'm gonna take a little bit of the yellow, a little bit of white marble. It's very streaky, very marbly. This is gonna be more white than yellow, actually, to to even make a difference on there. And I'm actually way more white because I want you to be able to see it every which way. Don't you don't want them all going the same way. If you're seeing any of my paintings, you know my paintings are more of a more of a whimsical look. Very fun, whimsical, lighthearted, nothing serious. Okay, I need a little bit more white. Okay. You can see where it just gives it a little bit of bounce to it. And I think I may actually do the same thing. I want to add um, up here, bring a little bit more light in there over some that you already did. Just go and add a little white here and there. Brings a little light in there. Okay. All right, now we're gonna do, now here is where, I'm gonna bring it up here. Let me, let's have a discussion. Okay, this is where everybody thinks I'm wackadoodle because it looks really cute, right? But we're going to go and add a few little fun highlights here and there. We're going to do some white ones, but we're also going to do some black ones, okay? This is where people think I'm crazy. Black will actually even brighten it up more. 
when somebody brings a hanging to me and they say, what does it need? I tell them it needs black. And they just, what'd you say, Willis? You remember that show? Um, but black will actually brighten it up. I'm going to show you how. Okay. First, I'm going to go through uh, same number four round brush. Number four, not, not number four. Number, what did I say it was? I can't even see. It's number six. First, I'm going to do some white. Okay. I'm just going to kind of start out here at the outside of the petal and bring it in. Load your brush up for this. You're not going to want it on your highlight marks the same, but don't be scared to load it up because you don't want to have to go back and do it again. Down here where it's low, I'm just going to start from the inside. See how it's starting to come to life? All right, we're going to do the same thing with black. And but when I after I wash my brush off, I always do it like this, give it a little dry. Okay. Now black. Oh, the scary part. Okay, black. Be sure and load it up between petals. Okay, I honestly think a little bit here and there in here is going to make a difference. If you want to go all the way around this circle, and I'm just using the very, very teeny tip of my brush. I'm still loading it pretty good because I don't want to have to do it over again. You see? See how it starts to bring it together? And I'm going to flip this pour flower over again. And now, now it's going to be the scary part for you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go all the way across here. And I don't care if it's not one straight line. But a normal pot would be like that. I'm telling you, I'm not very good with the easel. Okay, holy cow, we're starting to have a pot. What do you know? I'm going to do a little white, just like we did the top. Super cute, right? Super stinking adorable. I think we're almost done, except I want to do a little bit of uh, the shading with the green. Take, just like I did the other, take a little bit of green, take a little white, marble it. See that? Take a little black in there. And you could, I mean, from here, you could totally do some lettering or something if you wanted. I think that's it. I think that's it, guys. Here, I don't have a hanger in here with me, but here you would add a hanger to it. And if you wanted a cute little bow up here or attach it to the side, you could totally do that. Also, um, they also make an exterior form of a chalkboard paint, guys. You could um, add a little chalkboard. That way you could change out your greeting ever how you wanted. So that's it. I hope you try this. If you do, Please, please, please send me your uh, picture. I would love to see how you created and what you did with it. If you're using regular craft acrylics with this, guys, and you can, that's totally fine, be sure to spray it two to three times, okay, with a clear spray sealer. I love rust -Oleum. I love a gloss for any of my door hanging that's going outside if you're not using exterior paint. So do that and send me pictures, guys. I can't wait to see what y'all do with it. Thanks for joining me.